Good morning, good afternoon, welcome to Crafters TV. My name is Ben Mosby. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday. So much still to bring you here on the channel over the course of the rest of the day and for the next couple of hours. It is a masterclass and I'm really looking forward to this because if you've ever come unstuck by the adhesive that you're using, uh, we've got all the answers. I impressed myself with that one. We've got all the answers for you over the course of the next two hours because welcome to the glue school. If you've ever wondered about what adhesive does what, which adhesive you should be using with which item, we will get all of those questions answered for you. And actually, we've got some brilliant deals coming up for you as well as far as all of the adhesives are concerned. And if we're talking about school, we need a teacher. In fact, the headmistress of Glue School will see you now. Uh, the lovely Jan is here. She's in her office. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> Hi. Honestly, yeah, it's like welcome in. <laughs> yeah. Wanted to make it a little bit more homely today because it's it's class. I like it. We're going to be doing lots of teaching today. I can't wait. I've got my glues at the ready. I've got more glues than we even knew what to uh, to do with today. But honestly, we've got some fabulous stuff. What I want to try and do today is actually sort of teach which glues are best for which project. So whether you're matting and layering something like this one, we've got those lovely pop up mom uh, numbers in there. You know, so if you're adding embellishments, which is the best glue to use if you're actually going to be doing some of the um, intricate framework with the we've got some of the Sharon Callis frames on so again which is the best it's all about which is the best glue so what we what we're going to use to stick the embellishments on what are we going to do to stick the frames on just look at the depth on here so again, which is going to be the best? Because the last thing you want is if you're going to make something stunning yeah. like that, you're not going to want it to start falling apart when it's sat on someone's mantelpiece. Again, we've got decoupage on the show today. So again, which is the best glues to use for this? So a lot of it is informative. Some of it is my preference. And I'm going to go through each particular glue in turn. So it's notepads and pencils at the ready, I think, today. Yep. Funny you should say that. Shadaya has literally just said on on Facebook, pen and notepad at the ready, almost like you read her mind. Uh, Patty's in from Michigan for Glue School, Debbie from Central Oregon, Leslie from South Wales, Gabrielle from Germany, uh, and Meve is in, uh, says happy St. Patrick's Day from a beautiful day in Dublin, Ireland. Yes, happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, good afternoon, says Mandy Doodle Hands, got my notebook ready for this one, uh, and Deborah says looking forward to this show. Uh, yeah, it is going to be super educational, lots of hints and tips for you as well, and if you've got any questions at any point, over the course of the show get those in because that's what this is all about answering all of your questions uh, no matter what it might be now uh, get in touch on Facebook and YouTube of course if you do comment during this show you've got the chance of winning prizes more about which I'll tell you later but let's get on and have a look at some of the bundles that we've got and we have got a brilliant bundle for you here which we are calling our starter selection it is a brand new bundle for you seven piece starter selection which basically I think gives you a bit of everything which is great particularly if you are a starter uh, you're just getting into your craft and you're thinking well which glues do I need this collection here I truly believe covers off pretty much everything for you. you've got something for each and every occasion with this particular bundle because you've got foam pads in there don't worry if you're thinking well, what are those for we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that during the show you've got your red liner tape you've got your glue tape pen and your uh, glue tape pen with the dots you've got your all-purpose glue your tacky glue and your 3d glue as well so all of that is included for a brilliant deal today 19 pounds or 30 33.50 saving over a quarter uh, and then of course if you're platinum you'll get another 20 percent off that too so what i would say to you is if you're new to crafting and you've been wanting adhesives get that collection because it's pretty much everything that you will ever need if you have been crafting for a while and you're thinking to yourself oh could do with some more tape pens could do with some more tacky glue could do with some more foam pads this is the show uh, to basically get involved with because we have pretty much all of our adhesives and in fact on this show We've got some glues that I've not seen before on the channel. Literally, a glue for each and every occasion. If you want to go for this one, though, the seven-piece starter collection, 19 or 33.50 is the deal. Now, what we're going to um, start with, first of all, and I think it's one of the questions which gets quite asked quite a lot, Jan, when it comes to uh, glues, tacky versus all-purpose. 
uh, can be a little bit confusing and hopefully you'll be able to clear this up for us. It is. That's where exactly where I'm going to start, Ben. Um, that starter pack has got that sort of all the most popular yeah. ones that we constantly you see us using while we're demoing. We're constantly flicking between one glue and the next and sort of we don't always have the time to explain why. So what we thought we'd do today is just break it down into segments. I'm going to go through all the glues that are in that starter kit and it's an excellent one mm. for sort of all round usage. And then we've got lots of other things on the show as well. So first of all, we're actually going to talk about solvent-based glue, all-purpose glue, versus water-based glue on the PVA. All right, so our tacky glue. So I think these are the two that we use most of all if you're using wet glue. Now, there's lots of other products out there for, for sticking, which we're going to go through. But to start off, there is two clear differences with this. One of them's visible. So we've got a clear glue in the all-purpose. Yeah. OK, let me just move that one to one side. So this is actually clear in the bottle and it is a solvent based glue. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit. This one's perfect for all your matting and layering and it sets really solid. It's solid. It gives strength to your project. So you've seen me when I'm demoing often put uh, pieces inside the uh, inside of the card to strengthen it so if you're using the kalal you've got that you don't end up with that card that sort of drifts on the mantelpiece and ends up falling flat yes you want to give it some strength the tacky glue is pretty much for everything else that the, the solvent one doesn't do the all purpose doesn't do so if you're wanting to stick embellishments and things like that if you're wanting to stick um the only thing that all purpose doesn't like is sort of coated surfaces so things Things like our Centura Pearl, Glitter Card, Mirror Card, things like that, I would be reverting back to the tacky glue. So let's go through them in turn. So what I've done is I've actually got some matting and layering. I want to just show you this in action. So I've just taken some textured cardstock and some pattern cardstock. And first of all, we're going to have a look at the Kalal glue. So on the top of here is a twist cap and it doesn't come all the way off. It literally just twists to open the nozzle at the end. And you've actually got some of the bottles have got the little glue spreader on as well if you need it. Yeah. So the biggest tip that I can give all of you out there with glue is less is more. In, and I was guilty of this for a very, very long time in using too much glue. It's a very popular sort of belief that the more glue you use, the better something's going to stick. Yeah. And it doesn't work that way. You've heard me talk about the mayo effect before, Ben. I knew you were going to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. And we've all done it where we've lathered something up with glue. And when you get to this point and press it down, it just squidges out of the edges. Yeah. The other, per the other uh, bit that I like about the, uh, the old purpose is you've got about two minutes. Can you see how it's wobbling there? Yeah. So you can actually wriggle it into place. If you're not great at getting things lined up, you've got about two minutes before it actually sets perfectly. And even if you'd got it completely wrong, I can take it back off and I can reposition it into place before it completely sets. Okay. Once I'm happy with it, I'm going to give it a good rub down just to activate that glue underneath. So a little bit of heat from your fingers activates the glue. And then I'm going to leave that to one side and I'm going to bring in my tacky glue. All right. Now this one is water-based glue. And because it's water-based, I always give it a shake before I start. Because anything that's water-based, if it's left stood for a long time, the water can separate. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever used a PVA glue and you've started to squeeze it out and you just get that awful watery runny yeah. bit, that's what it is. So a quick shake to mix it all back up. The same process at the top. It's got a twist cap that doesn't come all the way off. It just opens sufficiently to open the nozzle in the end there and it allows the glue out so with the pva glue we've got a water-based glue now how many of you out there and be honest how many of you have stuck papers down before and you get that awful wrinkling effect on the edges there yeah and then you let it dry and then you get your brayer out to try and uh, try and squish flat it down, down flat yeah. and it won't flatten and the reason is is because we've used the wrong glue so because we've used a PVA glue with a water content, it soaks into the card or into your paper and it makes it wrinkle basically. And because the fibres of the paper have soaked up that um, water, you can never get it straight again. Your card will set quite firm 
but it will still remain wrinkled. So what I've done then is I've put one of these together with PVA yep. and I've put one of them together with all purpose. And I'm going to leave those to dry for a second. All right, we'll come back to those in a little while. The other thing that I wanted to show you, and I am flicking backwards and forwards between the two, is to just go back to our all purpose. And I've just got some scraps of card here. So for example, the other bit about this one, if you actually get some on your card by mistake or if you've done that too much glue and it's all spread out you can take off the excess here let me just grab um, a little bit of tissue I'll use my cloth here take off the excess with your finger and then if you rub this one it will literally rub away from your card so this is our matte black card stock and it literally just rubs away from here same on your pattern papers I'm going to take the excess off and then just rub the rest of it and it sort of like gathers it all together in a little uh, little bobble and literally just rub it away. I'm glad you called it a bobble because so, Craig wasn't calling it that earlier. I can imagine, <laughs> I can imagine, I've heard it all, I've heard it called all sorts of things. <laughs> but yeah, takes it off the cardstock, takes it off your paper, so you've got that knowledge in that if some of it does squidge out, it does rub away. Yeah. Now you wouldn't be able to do that with the tacky glue. It does dry clear the tacky, but sometimes you can still see where it's squidged out of the edge of the cardstock. <clears throat> so any matting and layering, I would always be using my all-purpose glue unless I was matting onto a coated cardstock. Yep. And by coated cardstock, I mean something that's got that coating over the top of your base card. So for example, a glitter card or a Centura Pearl yes. is a plain white cardstock with a coloured pearl coating over the top of it. Something like Miri card is a cardstock underneath with the Miri coating over the top. The solvent, solvent will interfere with those coated cardstock. So again, back to your tacky. So they both have their own jobs to do. So let's just pop that back to one side. Uh, I'm going to leave those a little bit to dry because I want them to dry off that I've just done. Um, the other side of this, let me just go back to my, uh, I'm flicking between them because I wanted to do the comparison on them. But to go back to our all purpose glue, does have a slight odour in it, but it's not anything, I, I, I don't have a problem with it. It's something that I think you tend to get used to. Yeah. Uh, just because it's solvent based, all right, and it's, it's sort of part of the makeup of the glue. So I think it's one of those things that you do get used to when you use it regularly. So again, mainly matting and layering. I wouldn't be picking this up if I wanted to stick, say, a flower onto my card when I'd finished with it. All right, I would be jumping back to that tacky glue. And again, if I bring the tacky glue back in, I'm going to prove to you in a little while when we, when we see those ones that are dry that this is not the best glue for matting and layering. All right, because of that water content in it, it does give that sort of curving and wrinkling to your card, mainly because it's absorbing the water element in the glue. So those are our two main ones that you see us using. And when I'm demoing, you often see me using the, uh, the little applicators. Now, now we've actually got these on the show as we well do. today and these are great you can use these for the tacky and for your all purpose if you prefer um, and literally all it is is a case of opening these up and you can actually take the top off here and literally decant it from one into the other and you've got a really fine tip applicator then on your um tacky glue so that it comes out nice and slow for you so i'm going to leave it there just for a second ben for the, the the comparison for those i'll come back to those mats and layers once the glue's dried i've just got them here in front of me just waiting for them to dry okay so that's all purpose versus tacky probably the two most popular ones Brilliant stuff. Great to see, isn't it? And great to kind of, yeah, get the old notepad out, write down a few notes and, and remember all of these hints and tips. Uh, Melissa just saying, this is going to be a perfect masterclass for me. I use my multi-purpose glue a lot, but I'm always unsure of when to use my tacky glue. Uh, Patty Redmond on YouTube asks, what is the best glue to use for the puzzle dies, the, um, the jigsaw dies? I'm coming to that. Oh. I'm coming to that hold, later on. Hold that thought then. That's so, Patty, on one of our... Um, 
alternative glues, we'll call them. Right. Yes. All right. And I so will explain that when we get to that part. Patty, stay tuned for that then. Um, good morning, Jan and Ben from Ohio. Says Donna, love these masterclasses. So full of in uh, information. And Jude is saying, every time I watch a glue school, I learn something new. Looking forward to this show. Um, we'll do some more questions in just a few moments' time because they are coming in. Uh, we've got a, well, an essay of a question coming in, which I'll have a read of in just a second. Um, but don't forget, this is the set to go for, really, if you want a little bit of everything, because you have got um, everything that you need there for £19 or 33 50 is the deal on that. Loads of you commenting um, on how great that deal is. However, if you want to go for the bundle, which has got the fine tip glue applicators in, then you need to get your hands on uh, this collection. Um, as I understand it, right, this deal, you are getting your fine tip glue applicators for free, the way it works out, which is just amazing. And you're getting two, but two equals four because you get two in each, two times two, four. Good maths, Ben. Uh, and of course, the great thing is, as we've seen, uh, you can use your tacky glue or your old purpose to can into your fine tip glue applicator. So again, you know, if you do need to be more precise with your uh, glues, maybe, for example, you know, you're doing more of your intricate dies. These are super, super handy. And as we were chatting about at the back end of last week, these He's only just come back in stock and we're giving them away for free just because we can uh, but basically you're buying your glues two bottles of your tacky glue two bottles of your purpose and then you get four of those fine tip glue applicators two in each pack for free 15.96 or 28.88 just to prove that I think pretty much we've got a glue for everyone today and we've got bundles for everybody, we've got another um, collection for you. So maybe you um, want to go for the tacky glue and you want to go for the all-purpose, but you don't need the glue applicators. Or maybe you're thinking, well, I quite like a collection which brings the uh, 3D uh, glue as well, the chunky glue, as our, um, as our Debbie calls it. Then this is the collection to go for, because once again here, you're going to get two bottles of the tacky glue, two bottles of your, um, of your collar all-purpose, and then you're also going to get um, two lots of your um, 3D glue. One comes with the tools, everything that you need, and then you're getting a second tube of the uh, 3D glue as well. So like almost like a refill, if you like. So um, all of that again for $19.50 or $35, saving over 25% already. And then wherever you are within Club Inspire, save your platinum, another 20% comes off that price on screen. Um, right, keep the comments coming in. Any questions that you've got at all, get them in. And after each sort of little demo that um, Jan does, we'll do some questions, all right? So um, if you're not sure about what glue to use where, if you've got a particular question about a particular type of adhesive and you you're not quite sure, get those questions asked. Because if you ask a question today on Facebook or YouTube, then you could be winning a prize. I know, how cool is this? It is National Craft Month. So right throughout this month, we are giving away prizes each and every day. Today is the, I can't believe it, 17th of March already. Um, we've got two more weeks to be giving away prizes each and every day. This is today's prize, all right? So that is what you could be winning. Some amazing goodies within that bundle. We will announce the winner in the seven o'clock show. So comment in this show or comment early on in Creative Cravings later and you could be a winner of that, our daily prize. There's also a monthly prize as well, which is, right, this is amazing. I mean, the fact that we're giving away amazing bundles every day, awesome. But secondly, we are giving you the opportunity, if you go on our website, to win a Gemini Pro and a rotating disc as well. Details here, visit our website, um, it's literally take you a couple of minutes to enter and that could be yours. End of the month, we are giving away a Gemini Pro and a rotating disc as well. Just brilliant. Uh, lots of lovely comments still coming in. Saving this show says Hadassah so I can uh, stop hot gluing everything. Uh, we, we'll, we'll talk more about hot glue guns later on. Don't worry about that. Uh, Michelle Nitz for you on YouTube just saying great collection and price. Yeah, absolutely this bundle is. Uh, and Carol D, Collal All Purpose is my favourite wet glue. Red liner tape is my favourite dry adhesive. We will come on to all of that in just a second. But let's just recap on this main collection. It is, as Jan was saying, do you know what? A little bit of everything really to get you going. You, you, you've got something, I think, for most occasions there in the fact that you've got your tacky glue, you've got your all-purpose glue, you've got your 3D glue in there, you've got your foam pads, 320 of those, you've got your red liner tape, and then you've got your two tape pens, so you've got your glue tape pen and your dotty tape pen too. It is a fantastic bundle, something for everybody. It is a great starter kit. If you are new to us, um, if you're you know branching out into uh, adhesives and you think, oh, which one do I get? 
get this collection because you've literally got a little bit of everything. Uh, and if you need to stock up, if you're already crafting, you'll know which bundle you need to go for. They're all really, really good prices today. £19, 33.50 it is in uh, dollars for you as well. Um, keep the questions coming in. We'll have another Q&A session with Jan in just a few moments time. Uh, but we've got some more demos to uh, come back to now. And we're going to have another look at the tacky glue, aren't we? Yes, I just want to sort of show you. We were talking about tacky glue on that coated cardstock. And by the time I finish this, I can just see my pieces uh, at the front here uh, drying off. So we'll, we'll go back to those at the end of it. But what I've got here is actually some of our double sided luxury Centura Pearl. And I'm just going to make myself a box lid. I've already popped the base together and I've used plain cardstock for the base. But I actually want to look at this. And this is what I was talking about, about anything that has a coating on. So some kind of um, something different to the actual base cardstock. Yeah. Then the tacky glue is the best one. And the best way to use this is if you read the instructions on it, it asks you to pop the glue onto your chosen uh, piece. So in this case, we're going to pop it on the glue tabs here. Not too much. And then I'm actually going to smooth it out with my finger. Mm. And then I'm going to leave it for a second or two. Don't try and glue it straight together. Tacky works best when you leave it to what we call cure for a few seconds. All right. It literally goes tacky, which is where it gets its name from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin my box around and I'm going to do this on all of the um, the tabs ready so just smoothing it out and the reason I'm smoothing it out even though it's the corner of the box I want a nice finish again if you've used a PVA glue and you've used something that's got a surface on like this and I know I'm speaking from experience because mm. I've done all these things and I've learned the hard way how many times have you stuck something down and you can see if I've put my glue on like this how many times has it dried and you could see that line of glue under yeah. your cardstock we've all done it so just by smoothing it out a little bit here just so that you've got that nice film on here and all i've got is just a, a wipe at the side of me that i'm just wiping my finger off here and then again onto this one and again you don't need much glue you can see how little i'm putting on there just to cover the tab and then by the time you've got to that fourth one this one's now ready it's actually tacky now i can feel it sticky all right, so I'm just going to start and pop these together now. And what I've done, because it's a wet glue, I've just brought some little clips to pop it together. Whatever you've got there, just give it a squeeze and pop the clip in there to hold it together. Well, some of those so again, uh, clips that uh, we have on their softer side would be quite handy. Yes, they? I was. Have, I haven't actually got those. I was looking through my stash and I haven't actually got any of them. I've got a, a fabric drawer. And I was rummaging through the drawn I, I could have sworn I'd had some of these, but couldn't find them anywhere. So yeah, I've had to pick some paper clips out, but anything, little pegs, little um, bulldog clips, oh, anything yeah. like that, that you've got that's, that's just lightweight, that's not actually gonna damage your cardstock. So literally all I've done is lined up those sides and I'm just gonna pop those on. Now with the wet glue, it does take a little bit longer for it to set. And quite often when you see us demoing, we will use red line tape for anything like this that's construction based. And that's purely because you've got an instant sort of stick with a, a dry tape. So again, I said to you earlier that I was gonna talk about the, the uses for the glue, but also about my preferences as well. Yeah. So quite often if I'm making uh, boxes, I do use the red line tape, mainly because I'm so impatient that I can't wait for it to dry. So again, we're gonna leave that one to dry. And just while we're waiting for that, I want to come back to those two that I did earlier. Oh yes. And again, this one on the left, I don't know how well you can see this. Let me just turn over, uh, I want something dark colored. Not actually got anything at the minute that I can use. Let me just pop it on the back of one of my paper pads because I want you to see that this is literally as flat as a pancake. It really is. It's proper flat. It's matted and layered. There's no wrinkling on it and it is quite solid. Two pieces of cardstock there. Well, piece of cardstock, piece of pattern paper. But you can hear there how solid that is. Yeah. When I bring the other one in, I don't know how easy it is, probably easier if I stand it up here. Can you see how buckled it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, you can. And on the back of it, I've got lots and lots of dimpling on the back well, sort of, of it. It's bubbling, isn't it, almost? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the water that's soaking in. It doesn't know what to do. Yeah. It doesn't know where to go, so it's soaking <laughs> into the product. So I've got, I've got sort of like the corners sort of curling up here. I've got all that dimpling on the back, which will come through on the front eventually. And I just think, 
think, you know, why would you want your finished project to look like that when you can have it so nice and neat? And that is probably one of the best um, demonstrations that I've seen. Leanne did this demonstration a while ago to just show the difference. And I think, look how straight that one is. Yeah. There. Yep. And then this one's all curly and wonky and bubbled. And Buckling more by the minute, I isn't it? I just think, you know, that is probably one of the easiest ways to show you mm. the difference with it. And no matter how hard you try, you know, I've, I've done this in the past and I've run it through my Gemini, squidged a bit more glue out, got it stuck inside my plates and ended up in a right old mess, purely because I wasn't using the right glue. And I started out, you know, I was a beginner. I started out doing all this, doing it wrong, listening to the professionals and learning, you know, and I was sort of taught by the best because I did glue school my first glue school was with Ali Ann so uh, you don't get much better than that where glue is concerned <laughs> so that's those two from earlier and then as I say we'll leave the um the little box to dry it just needs a second uh, probably about I would say 10 minutes to, to let it cure properly but you can see how that's going nice and uh, nice and smooth now and that will fit when it's all done well, yeah it goes on even with the clips on you've got that lovely finish on there can you see how there's no such none of that lineage where yeah. you've got the because we smoothed the glue down it's just made it lovely and nice and flat on a, a nice finish on there so i'll probably take the, the clips off in about 10 minutes or so so that i know that it's set okay superb we've got loads of questions coming in so i tell right. you what oh. we will um, i feel like this is a bit like you know the i don't know if you have this tv show in the us but Mast mastermind where the contestants there in the in the black chair like uh jan is now and then they uh, they fire the questions uh so uh jan specialist subject today is adhesive <laughs> you have one minute but no i won't do like that um so this question i i think i think i might know the answer to this but um, well i don't know let's ask you sharon says I still have real problems understanding tacky glue. For Valentine's Day, I embossed some hearts to stamping card. Since I was attaching it to Centura Pearl, I used the tacky glue because they say to use tacky glue with Centura Pearl, but it ruined my cards. They were all wrinkly. So when exactly are you supposed to use tacky glue? Could that be a case of putting too much on again? I, I was just going to say the same, Ben. Yeah, I would hazard a guess that there was probably too much. As I say, it's really hard to explain to you how little glue that you need when you're sticking something together. And I still, I still am guilty sometimes of putting too much glue on. But the more you use, the more that glue's got to cure. It's got to attach itself to your embellishment and the cardstock. And like I said, with the one that we've just done here, here, the water contents got to go somewhere so instead of soaking into your embellishment it's soaked into the card base and then you end up with all that wrinkling on again so you know if you're not getting on with tacky glue the other bet the other thing that I use a lot for adding embellishments is the glue gun the hot glue gun which we're going to come to later so I'll talk about that when we get to that section I, I loved your tip as well, just in the, the demo there that we saw, that of just like almost like smoothing the glue out a little yeah. bit. Um, yeah. you know, if you think you've maybe got too much on, just take a little bit off with your finger and smooth it out like Jan showed you there. And I think that could be, be the thing. There's loads of questions coming in now. Wow, this is brilliant. I love these uh, masterclasses. So um, feel free to say no, I'm going to answer that question in a little bit if I, yeah. if I cover something that you're going to cover. But Dolly wants to know, can you tell me how long it takes for the 3D or chunky glue to dry? Loving all your tips. We're going to do that one next. That's right. coming up next. So, yep. so I can answer that one in the next demo. All right, Dolly, yeah. so that one will answer. Patty, we'll still know we haven't answered your question yet, but we're coming up to that one. Uh, Diane says, which glue is best for attaching cardstock to acetate? Cardstock to acetate. I nearly always use my red line tape whenever acetate's concerned. Obviously, a wet glue, you can use the tacky glue with acetate, uh, but again, it's about using a very, very small amount. I can't emphasize enough, particularly with the tacky glue, that less is more. You really do need a very small amount of it to actually do the job. But I nearly always, if I'm attaching acetate to anything on my projects, I nearly always use the red line tape for it. You get a really nice strong seal. It's instant. You don't have to wait for it to dry. And then you can move on to the next step in your project. And as I say, part of that is because I have very little patience for things drying. Right. <laughs> um, there's some brilliant questions coming. And honestly, if you're thinking, oh, that's a silly question, I don't want to ask it. No, ask it. please ask. There are no silly questions, honestly. Yep. Um, so Diane on Facebook wants to know, another Diane, uh, what kind of glue can I use on the flowering foam? 
The flowering foam, uh, again, I tend to use the glue gun with that one, uh, purely because you're getting an instant fix. So you want a wet glue in that sense for the flower foam, because obviously things like your red line tape and your tape runners won't work on such as, uh, such as the foam. And obviously you're wanting to shape your flowers as well. Mm. So you can use the 3D glue gel, but it does take a little while to dry. You want something that's instant. And when you see us demoing with the flower forming foam, it's nearly always the heat, the hot glue gun that we use little tiny tiny bits of it again and if you get those stringy bits from the hot glue which people often don't so I don't like using hot glue because you get all those hairy yeah. bits on it when everything's done and it's finished pop your heat tool on a low setting just waft it over it and all those little strings will just dissolve and disappear into into the ether kind of thing and it's all finished Yep. I mean, there's so many questions. Should we do one more for now? Yep. We'll do one more and then we'll, and if you've asked another <coughs> question, don't worry, the chances are we'll come to it. Uh, so last one for now, Rosemary Rich says, which glue would I use for adhering napkins? Aha, uh -huh. we're going to come to that later on in the show as well. It's almost yep. like she's read your mind. <laughs> I it? spoke to all these people earlier and asked them to send the questions. <laughs> I knew it. I knew no, it. No, I'm joking. No, I've got a demo <laughs> for that with the napkins for those of you that like using those and I'll show you that later on in the show. Yep. All right, well then, one more because you didn't answer that question. Yep. Uh, for Holidays Design says, I need help with delicate dyes like thin sentiments and intricate dyes. I try to use a wet glue so I can position better, but I tend to end up with glue spots showing. Yep. Again, coming to it later on. So we've got our little dotty tape <laughs> yes. pen at the rescue, which I'm going to demo on a really intricate, uh, it can't get me words out now, intricate die cut. So okay. we're going to come to that one later as well. I'm yep, so stay, stay tuned if you can keep. If you can't stay for the whole show, don't forget you can watch us back at any time once we finish live they're all archived go on to crafters companion on youtube and you can watch them at any point absolutely best okay. thing to do as well when you go there is hit the subscribe button of course then you'll get notifications when new shows arrive and you'll be able to make your own little playlist there too so i'm trying to keep track of the questions which you've asked which we haven't yet answered but we know we're going to answer to make sure that we do that i'm sure Jan, jan's on top of it it's all fine. <laughs> uh, but keep those questions coming in anything you want to ask us uh, we will do as many questions as we can over the course of the next hour and a half because that is what we are here for right red liner tape this is the uh, next bundle for you uh, two-piece collection um, super cool and super strong is this as well so particularly good if you are into your um, construction for example you're gonna get two rolls 10 meters on each roll which is amazing uh, you've got your 12 mil obviously slightly thicker and then your uh, your three mil uh, red liner tape as well that is a 15% saving today for those two if you just want to go for those individually uh, which comes in at 550 or 1050 if you're shopping with us in the States uh, and once again if you are a platinum member another 20% comes off that deal uh, best thing to do as I say we will keep you abreast of all of the deals on the show but of course you can check our web um, to see all of the deals that are there and also whilst you're there you could probably check out our get it Got it good deal. I've got to be honest with you, I've not seen this collection um, in real life before. I mean, you know, I mean, I've seen it on the screen, but I've not seen it here uh, in the studio. And I absolutely love it. It is your uh, staycation collection, stamps and dies, uh, all about, I think, what we're all looking forward to uh, getting away on holiday again, whether it be uh, here in the UK or maybe further afield. But this staycation collection brings you your happy camper stamp and die set. You've got the simple life and road trip, life's the beach, and that glorious paper pad you just saw a little uh, flick through as well. 44 or 53 is the deal on that. It is a lovely, lovely collection. It is our Get It Got It good deal. And that is the current deal, which runs through until the end of the week or whilst stocks last. Righty ho, if you have just joined us, a very good afternoon, good morning. Welcome to Crafters TV. My name is Ben Mosby and we're in a masterclass. It's glue school, um, basically, any questions that you need to ask to do with any adhesive, then this is the day to get them answered, honestly. And if you're in need of adhesives, this is the show to shop on as well, because we have got some amazing bundles. What I would point you to is the deal that you can see on the screen right now, which is brilliant. It's the seven-piece starter collection, because, well, it is just that. If you're just starting off and you're thinking, oh, I need a little bit of everything, you've pretty much got it in that kit. And again, if you are new and you're confused by all of the different glues and adhesives, you've got a little bit of everything there, and we're talking all about the different adhesives that you've got in that collection during the show so if you're getting that going oh i'm not sure what i use for what by the end of the show you'll know we've already talked about the uh, tacky we've already talked about the all-purpose as well we're going to be coming on to the two different tape pens that you've got your glue tape pen your dotty tape pen we're going to be chatting more about the uh, the foam pads as well the red liner tape you're going to get and of course you've got your 3d chunky glue in there as well and that's the next one we're going to be looking at loads of you commenting 
saying what a great deal that is. I think it's super, because if you're starting a little bit of everything, if you're already well into your crafting, it's a great little stash builder. You've got everything there. Uh, to kind of you know get you going. £19 or £33.50 is the deal on that. Less than 20% if you're platinum makes that a wonderful, wonderful deal. Right, so now we are going to have a look at the um, the 3D glue, aren't we? What are we going to use this for? What we're going to use this. So this is sort of dimensional glue. So if you're wanting to build dimension with something, it's almost like a wet version of foam pads. Right. Okay. So there's there's sort of two halves to most glues. So this one's actually sort of um, it's a gel rather than a liquid. Um, but this one comes to us in a tube i'm going to show you it's got tools in the set in the kit and i'm going to show you how to fill the syringe up with the glue first so in here you actually get your tube of 3d kalal glue yeah you get your little syringe for application and then we also have in there a fine tip nozzle as well and we should have yep we've got our i call it my corned beef key <laughs> Do you remember having these on the corned beef tins? Yes. Oh, I used to love playing with those. Yes. Yeah, sad life, I've lived. No, and I'm then with you. A little tiny cap, which is going to go on the end of the, um, the syringe, okay? Now then, the one thing that I want to say about 3D gel is that it cannot stand air. Anything to do with sort of out in the open and it will start to set immediately and it hardens to a case where it becomes unusable. So it is really important with both your tube and your syringe to really look after them carefully and make sure that there's no air gets trapped in either. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So for your syringe then, I'm literally going to pop the plunger all the way in to start with. Okay, I'm going to take off my lid here and it always comes to you, whoops, for that reason with a little seal on oh, there. Okay. So that even if you're buying in advance, because we were talking about this before the show and I said, if this was me, this is a great chance to stock up on your glues. I don't know about you guys. I know every time I go to the supermarket, I buy a jar of coffee, whether I need it or not, because it doesn't go out of date. Yes. It sits in the cupboard. It's something we always use, particularly when it's on offer, a couple of jars of coffee. Well, this is the same with the glues. Pop a couple of lots in there. They're not, you know, as long as you keep them sealed, they're not going to go out of date. You've got them there to use. I've got a cupboard in, uh, in my craft room that's just purely for all different adhesives. And the minute that I take the one out of the cupboard, I then go and order a couple more to put back in the cupboard. So, yeah, when it comes to you, you've got a little tiny foil seal on it, which you're going to take off now completely to start using it. So it just peels away to reveal the glue inside. And if I can just show you against my hand there, it's actually like a, a clear gel we're just having a zoom in there you can see that gel on the end there yeah yes fantastic so what we're actually going to do then we're going to pop the plunger oops out of the end there all right and the end of the syringe just happens to be the right size to fit over the end of the tube there okay so i'm going to pop my corn beef key on the end of it there ready to start turning i'm going to always call okay. it that from now on. yep my corn beef key i'm yep. going to hold this over the end and then i'm going to just turn let me pop it that way around pop it on and just turn it if you prefer not to use the key you can just squeeze but the idea with this one in fact i think i'd be better turning with my right hand which is how i started off there okay just to get it going yeah. and literally we're going to pop it into the end of the syringe now so just by turning this it's going to start pressing the glue into the syringe you can see it's not easy with it being clear is it to see oh you can see it going there and i'm going to stop when i get to the one okay i'm not going to feel you think well why is she not filling it all the way up all right so when you've got that far as far as the glue is concerned now before you close it Every single time, and this is really important, that you press the glue until you can see that little bead of glue on the end there. It's actually protruding from the end of my tube. Yeah. And I want that sticking out before I put my lid on so that the glue makes contact with the lid. No air getting in that tube. OK, the same here. The reason I've left the gap in the end here is because we're going to pop the plunger back in and it's actually going to push that glue down into the bottom of the syringe and again I want to push it until I see some of the glue actually pop out the end and if I can just show you on the back of here you can perhaps just see that it's yeah, really yeah. difficult because it's all clear but I've just got a little tiny bit of glue stuck out of the end there yeah 
So every time you close this syringe, I want you to do that so that you know for certain now that that glue is going to make contact with your cap and there's no air. It's sealed at the bottom with the cap. It's sealed at the top with the syringe. And this is good to go then to use on your projects. OK, so looking after these, the actual fine tip fits on the end of the tube so if for any reason you wanted any fine tip work you can do this you just need to snip the end off to open the end there with some scissors and you can screw that directly onto the end of your tube but again each time you close it it becomes habit after a while to just press it until that glue pops up and then pop your lid back on now I said this was mainly for dimensional work. So what I've done is I've actually die cut some of our floral decoupage. And we have got some of these extra elements on the show today. So if you were in the market for any of this, I mean, I, these are absolutely gorgeous and fit so many different styles of cards. So if you haven't come across them before, they're actually a pad of decoupage and then you get the metal dies to cut all these elements out. If you prefer fussy cutting with your little snips, you can just take one of the sheets out of the pad and sit and fussy cut at night while you're watching TV, something like mm. that. And then how it works is you've got your main piece, all right, and I'm going to work on the back of here again so that you can see a little bit better. You've got your main piece and then it goes in order of size. So the next size piece. And what I like to do with these is just shape them slightly with my fingers just to give it a little bit of, of, of sort of dimension. And I'm going to take the tip off my syringe there and we're just going to pop some little tiny blobs of glue all over the back of that piece of... Um, and again, the larger the blob of glue, the more dimension you're going to get with your um, decoupage. And again, I like to just use my... Uh, my tweezers there just to hold everything in place so look at where your layout is i've got the pink flower over here and you're just going to line it up over the top and just not press it all the way down i don't want to squidge the glue i just want it to hold its shape and this is the beauty of your 3d gel it will hold whatever shape you leave it in now as far as drying time which is one of the questions that we had uh, earlier on dolly's question it's, it's about 20 to 30 minutes to be touch dry right. as in it wouldn't squish it but if i was actually going to give this to somebody certainly going to pop it in the post to someone i would be leaving it overnight to set properly right you want it to be quite hard before you pop it in an envelope or pop it into the mailbox or anything like that so about 20 to 30 minutes to be touch dry so that it's not gonna if i press it now the glue would just squidge out the sides yeah. again so 20 to 30 minutes you'd get to the point where you could touch it properly maybe add it to your card because i always do these and leave them to dry all right but i would certainly be leaving it overnight before i actually popped it onto uh, a project okay and as far as the syringe goes, as long as you follow those rules and make sure no air gets into it, it will stay in there as long as you need to. Now, really good housekeeping practice with your syringe is at the end of the day, say I've done this decoupage and we get halfway down the syringe, good housekeeping would be to refill it before you put it away for the night. So always take your plunger out, refill the syringe like we did before, pop your plunger back in, squeeze that little bit of gel out of the end of the syringe pop your cap on and it's good to go for the next day then but the minute you leave a gap in it so if for example i've been using it during the day and i knock the plunger and i've got a, a section in in the syringe that had got air in it yeah you'll find that the air will that the glue will set in the syringe and it's not easy to get back out if any of you have witnessed that it's really not easy to get it back out of the syringe at that point and as far as um, the glue goes itself, we sell it with the tools. We also sell it without, which is like a refill product. So you don't have to buy, if you don't wish to buy all the, um, the tools with it every time, you can actually just buy the glue, the tube. You just get the tube of glue yeah. in the box on its own. And the good thing is we have got that deal, which brings you the uh, actual kit and with the glue on its own as well. So if you want to go for that one, you can do. Um, I was just going to ask about the um, the glue in the syringe, but you just pretty much covered that off because Christine was asking how long yeah. uh, you can keep the glue in the syringe. And the other question,
question from Dolly you covered off, of course, as well, with um, how long does it uh, does it take to take yep. to dry? It, it, it's perfect, isn't it? If you're doing like dimensional work, particularly, uh, I suppose, again, for beginners, this perhaps over your foam pads, because it gives you more time to manoeuvre, doesn't I it? I was going to talk about the foam pads as well, Ben, because yeah. you can do exactly the same job. And as you, you all know, our Craig absolutely <laughs> loves his foam does pads. He? I don't know whether you noticed it no. before, he does. No. Uh, and again, that is pure preference as to which you prefer. Obviously, with the foam pads, you're going to get an instant stick. So if you're doing something quick and you haven't got time to let it set, then your foam pads, you know, as soon as they're on there, they're dry. You don't have to worry about them. Um, let me just pop this in again. And again, I'm just going to pop that little tiny bit of glue out of the end of my nozzle there and then pop that one. It won't stick to it. You'll still be able to get the tip off. But I now know that this end is sealed with the plunger and this end has made contact with the glue with the cap. And that will stay now in my stash until I'm ready to use it again. But obviously we've got... If I just pick this up here, you can see we've got that lovely sort of shaping to yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, dimension to it, you know. And again, you can as much gel. The more gel you use, the higher you get with it. What you tend to find, I well, personally, what you find with the foam pads is it, it becomes more stacked yeah. rather than sculpted. And again, it's an individual thing. You know, everybody's different. There's no right or wrong. If you like to use the foam pads absolutely fine if you want to have a go with the glue gel as i say this the kit we've got it with the tools for your first purchase like i've just shown you with the syringe but then after you've bought that first purchase you would just need to buy the refill pack then that just has the tube of glue in because you've already got those tools to hand to use and then you know once this is dry i've done the, the one that i've done at home here is proper rock solid yeah. and again you can see all that dimension on there how it's all built up i've not done a finished project for these but just to show you you know just laying it on there ready you've got it on just that little plaque just to finish whatever card it is and then that could be your card front could be the top of a box it, whatever you wanted to do it even if you I mean just wrapping presents and popping one of those on the top of it with a tag it just finishes yeah. it off beautifully and you get so many in your paper pad that you you know you'd be able to do that yeah absolutely perfect and uh, don't, don't forget of course just to let you know with your starter collection the uh, the glue that you do get so the 3d glue that does come with the tools as well all right um so you will get your um your syringe and your corned beef key included <laughs> uh, with that i've never as much as like now i think of the collar glue as your chunky glue that is now forever going to be the corned the beef, corn beef key uh <laughs> just great i love that uh ooh, take, takes me back a few years that um yeah so this is a great kit as you've seen and i love the fact that we're breaking it down and showing you all the individual elements of your starter selection you've got your uh, your collar glue, okay, and as I say, again, that comes with everything that you need. Your tacky glue, we've covered. Your um, all-purpose glue, we've covered. You're also then going to get your foam pads, uh, you're going to get your red liner tape, and then your two lots of tape pens as well. One is your glue tape pen, and one is your dotty tape pen. More questions coming in, which we'll um, fire at Jan in just a second, but if you want to go for the starter selection, it's £19 or 33 50 proving very, very popular uh, once again this afternoon. It really is a super bundle just to stock up. Um, you know, like Jan was saying earlier on, if you are brand new to crafting, you've got a little bit of, um, of, of everything there. Um, do you know what? I, I I was going to ask you some questions about the 3D um, glue, but you pretty much covered all of them off, really, as far as the um, syringe was concerned and the drying yeah. time. Um, we have got other questions coming in, which we will tackle in just a few moments' time. Uh, but let's talk about some other adhesives that we've got for you on the show, like, for example, uh, your extra strong uh, tape. This is absolutely brilliant. It's a six pack of your, um, of your tape pens. Always hugely popular when we have these in stock. These tend to fly out the door. Super, super handy. Uh, then the deal on this is you buy five, you get one free. I say you buy five, you get one free. Yes, Jan. Uh, 95 or 29.75 uh, is the deal on that. Uh, 22 meters of tape on those, and they are just super duper handy. You see those uh, being used all the time here at, um, at Crafters TV, and they are really, really super handy. And let, let's ask a question about these, actually, because it kind of leads quite nicely into the next demo, because uh, Mandy Doodle Hands, I love that. I love that name. Please, please say that that is your actual surname, Mandy. <laughs> I, I really hope that it is. And if it isn't, you need to 
change your name by Depot because that's great. Maddie Noodleham says, um, a lot of the crafters when demoing, making boxes, they use the tape pen. Yep. Is that for speed or um, or can you use that too? So basically I think it's a toss up between tape pens and red liner pens. So are our crafters doing it for speed or is it actually something that you can use in real life? No, it is absolutely something. This is as strong as your tacky glue. All right, so you've basically got a wet glue versus a dry glue. And then the red line tape, you know, is dry glue as well. So it's all about preference. Yeah. You know, some people get on with the tape pens, other people don't. So again, all I would say to people today with the offer that we've got on today is get the bundle and try them and choose which works best for you. Just because I use one particular item doesn't mean that everybody has to. If you watch us guys, you know, as, as sort of de demonstrators, we all do something slightly different with them. You know, t Sarah loves her tape pen. She'll use these most of the time. You know, some of us revert to the wet glue, but obviously you've got drying time with the wet glue. And when we're demoing, time is something that we don't have a lot of. So, you know, not to say that at home, I'd nearly always use wet glue when I'm crafting at home, purely because you'll get a really strong bond. But the tape pen, Leanne worked and worked and worked. I think she tested something like 25 different adhesives wow. before she decided on the one that she wanted to do the job. Yeah. And it needed to be perfect. So you've got 22 meters. It's the longest tape pen that I'm aware of on the market. It's going to last a long time. And again, just little tricks in how to use it so it comes with its cover so that you don't get it stuck to something while it's it's hit you know in your desk drawer or in your bag or what have you and then what I've got here is just a piece of pattern paper and while I was just uh, waiting for Ben I've just literally been covering the paper with my tape pen so the action is to make sure first of all that you've got the ridges on the top I usually put my finger on there and the reason we call it a tape pen is because you hold it a little bit like you would a pen yeah. and you're going to run it along where you want it and then when you get to the end you're going to just flick it so whether you flick it towards you or whether you flick it away from you just to break the adhesive otherwise you'll end up with that long string of adhesive and we've all again we've all done it I've done it and it doesn't want to go anywhere and you end up in all sorts of problems with it but you need to break it because it's a continuous roll of tape inside here you need to actually break it on that roll to, to stop that happening and then what I'm going to do is just fold this together and the best thing with the tape again is to apply that little bit of warmth from your fingers so a really really good sort of rub with it with your fingers make sure that it's stuck down well all the different ways that you're sticking it so I've gone all over this piece of car a piece of paper here literally just to make sure that it's in the right place give it a really good rub make sure that that heat from your fingers is going through penetrating through the uh, the paper there and actually sealing the job because that you wouldn't normally have this much on normally you would only have it around the edge but i've covered the whole piece purely because i wanted to prove to you how strong this is so i'm just going to give it a little rub on the other side as well so if i was wanting to put these together to then die cut and make a double-sided die cut I've got that instant sort of adhesion. I don't have to wait for it to dry, but when you actually come, and here we go, look, to try and actually get this apart here. That is just look stuck. Wow. I'm really sort of like, yeah. And you, I see you, Jan's face, look at that, the effort. It's like <laughs> proper like pulling this now. You can see how white my fingers are going, look, my knuckles. Yeah. And honestly, trying to get this, it is coming apart, but, but I'm going to end up at some point damaging the paper and pulling yes. it. it re I am really pulling like with all my might there. And it, it, it's stuck well and truly. I wouldn't want to be taking it all off. Proper like cannot get it apart there and the other thing again I'm going to stick it back down again because I might be able to use that for something later the other thing that I love the tape pens and this is a question we get asked a lot Ben is vellum vellum is notoriously one of the hardest things to stick down and for a very very long time I never bothered sticking I used to get my uh, piercing tool out pop a hole in and put brads in the corner and that was it that was my vellum fastened on yeah because I didn't know any better but just watch now then I'm going to go on the reverse of the vellum with the tape runner again I'm going to follow each edge and flick just to break that adhesion on it flick and all I've done is matted and layered a piece of craft card 
with a piece of patterned paper out of one of the pads that I'd got on the desk and then I'm going to pop this over the top just to mat and layer and then I'm going to challenge our George oh. we've got him on on camera today go on then George challenge George to get really close as oh. close as we can get George I want to see if you can find the tape underneath there go on then George find it go on George can you see it can you see it hey no <laughs> Cannot no. see it underneath there. If I bring the edge, there. yeah, the edge in view there, look, and it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's the only thing I've found that you can put under vellum that doesn't show. Perfect. Vellum doesn't like wet glue very much at all. Again, that water content interferes with the makeup of the paper. Yeah. Uh, the red line tape shows through it because it is an actual physics. It's thicker the tape than what's in the tape runner. But I just think this was, when I first found this, I was like, whoa. Years and years and years, I have tried to stick vellum onto projects unsuccessfully. So your tape pen is your best friend for that job. So would, would this work as well, very quickly? Because Aisha's asking, um, what about putting things on acetate, like flowers or embellishments? So same sort of thing or not really? Um, what if you'd made something out of acetate yeah. and then you wanted to pop I think, uh, an I think embellishment a, yeah. on? Um, again, I'd probably be looking at either my tacky glue, but again, that very small amount of it, depending okay. on how big your embellishment. I mean, I've got some here. If you have a look at some of these, these have been done with, uh, you know, we've got little gr glass, glass, elements little handles on here these have been stuck with tacky glue the flowers and everything have been stuck on with tacky glue here yes. if not if you're not a lover of the tacky glue then that would be when my hot glue gun came out yeah but really careful with acetate obviously the hot glue gun does get very hot and if you're putting it onto acetate you'd be better with the um the heat resistant acetate so it doesn't actually melt it yeah Red line tape works on acetate as well. I tend to use that a lot when I'm working with acetate. So again, it, it's horses for courses. A really, the one thing that I want to stress to everybody is to try them and see. See which suits you best. All right. Um, so just before we move on, there's a few people, I believe, uh, having trouble with the the flick yep. with the tape pen. So could you show us the... I can, Maybe yep. in slow motion. I'll do it really slow. We'll see if our George <laughs> can get in close again onto the desk here we are look okay i've got the black card in the hope that you can see the line of tape better so literally if you look at your tape pen it's got a, a bottom yeah and where the tape comes out and then the top bit's got like little ridges here on the top i usually put my finger on that bit just for the pressure and then literally rather than going flat with it you want to sort of have it at a slight angle yeah and then you're going to make contact with your cardstock and run it all the way across your cardstock, wherever you want it to go. The slower, the better. Okay, and then literally, I'm pressing on it now yeah. and just snapping it across. Okay. So I'll do it again for you. So from where you want it to, say where we're going down the outside. Okay, we're gonna go right down the edge there, nice and slow. Okay, when we get to the bottom bit, let's just make sure you can see that, yeah? Little bit of pressure and then just as if you sort of, ooh, just, just, whoosh, ooh, it's ooh, that flick of the wrist, ooh. flick of the wrist off it there, like, oh, just get rid of it there. Yeah, yeah. you go right. I yeah. go left when I do yeah. my Yeah, again, I've seen some people come this way. So again, yeah. you can actually come towards then, yourself. Oof. It's all that that sort of quick snap of the wrist, yeah. just to get it off there. So again, you can come towards yourself, try it, see which I actually prefer to go. It's like doing a tick. Yeah. Oh yeah? yes. So it's like sort of bringing it on there, and if if like that. I've not actually got any adhesive there. Just roll it on, yeah. you know, with your thumb there. Pop it on. And I just prefer that flick, and like a tick. Yeah? Yeah. And it should be, you can see on the edge of the card, if I get it in line there, can you see where you've got that really nice sort of end there on the tape look? It's got a really nice straight edge on that ending where you've broken that adhesive. What I will try and do is show you what happens when you don't flick. Let me just see if I can get it to do it. Oh, okay. It's not always... Mm. Is that when it sort of begins to clog a little bit inside yeah. and it all gets gunged up in the I'm really the sticky runners. now on it because it's covered in tape. Let me just see if I can get it to do it. It's not easy when you're wanting it to, to do the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's... There we go. Oh, here we go. Let's oh, see if we yeah. can get it the, now then. It's not going to be easy to see. 
it's got like a, a stringy bit. There you yeah. go, you can see it. You see it in the light there. And that's yeah. the tape on the runner now. And it's like, well, what do you do with it now? Where does it go? You start pulling it and it starts pulling the tape out of your pen. Yeah, yeah. And what, if that happens, just put it back down and flick it to break it. Yes. All right. And then if you get to the point where it's just sort of not quite in place, roll it on a bit and you'll feel it on your finger that it's sticky again. So again, it is about looking after them. And it is, I tend to prefer to take my time with it. When you do it quickly, it's pulling the roll out at such a speed that sometimes the sticky it, it, it sort of doesn't almost keep up with you so I prefer to go that little bit slower just flick it off when you're finished and yes. you've got all that lovely adhesion there yeah. to uh, to to, to stick and just before we move on I'm gonna to have to show you these again because they're actually sat moving while I'm, while oh, I'm look at the way on your right hand side. just look at these now we've got let me bring this back in so that you can see. So just uh, remind us what see. you did with these earlier. Yes, yeah, so, so anybody that wasn't, were, uh, wasn't watching at the top of the show, we compared our all-purpose glue, which is for matting and layering brilliantly, any kind of ordinary paper cardstock that's not coated. Yes. And just look, this, this is what I like to see. Just look how Still flat. There's no ruttling, there's nothing on it at all. But then we compared it with our tacky glue, which is a water-based PVA glue. Oh, <laughs> no. It's just making me laugh because it's sat there. It's all, I've got another word for you, Ben. It's snurped up. That's great. What is that? <laughs> snurped it's up. It's snurped. It's all curled on the corners, look. So then, you know, you'd be sat great there word. thinking, right, I've got to put it under some heavy books. Yeah. I'll stick it under my Gemini for the night. You get it out the next morning and it's still like this. And it's got all that sort of wrinkling and dimpling on the back of it there. Can you see there, look? And then when I turn this one over, you've got that beautiful, it just looks as if you've taken it straight from the card pad. So this really does show the difference in those two glues. But I'm just sitting, the more it dries, the more it's curling up. It's like one of those, uh, you know, those, fi those fortune telling fish that you yeah. get in crackers that just it's begin to kind just of like sort of curling turn. and curling, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I tell you what, if that isn't a great demonstration <laughs> of those uh, two different glues, I don't know what is. Because you don't want snurping, do you? Eh? You don't want snurping up. I think that's what Jan just said. Snurping, uh, yeah. Snurping. Oof. Uh, right, listen, if you want to go for the tape pens, this is the deal to go for. It's a six pack deal. Uh, and you buy five, you get one free. 19.95 or 29.75 is the deal on those we've also got the dotty so this is great for the fact um, if you have got perhaps more intricate dies to um a deer dies that you need to take the dotty tape pen is absolutely brilliant and jan will show you this in just a second because you know what someone mentioned it a little bit earlier on about how sometimes if you're uh, gluing with maybe a wet glue or if you try and use like your tape pen for example it can leave like you can see the adhesive you can see bits and pieces um, of the glue sort of hanging all over the place and it's pretty unsightly isn't it the tape pens are so clever for the fact that you will just get the adhesion where you want the adhesion i, I mean it, it, it blows my mind how it works but the point is if you're wanting something which is going to do those really really sort of intricate um, pieces of gluing then this is a great set to go for 24.95 or 34.75 is the deal on this once again uh, you're going to get six and once again 22 um, meters of um, tape on each of the rolls so you've got plenty uh, within that set and once again you buy five you, you get, get one free I say you buy five you get one free Ben and the whole Jan I know uh, it's, it's bonkers there's there's something for everyone on this show really uh, but let's have a look at this um, tape pen because hopefully as I've just explained it pretty much does what I just said doesn't it it honestly again this Clever. is exactly the same adhesive that we have in our double-sided tape runner so you, the stick wise the stick level it's exactly the same it's just been been put on in dotty format uh, so again if I can uh, just pop those to one side a bit and see if we can actually get this on camera if I do the same and it works exactly the same it's got the ridges on the top yeah okay you can actually see underneath that it's got the uh, the dot let me just uh, okay. yeah you see the dotty yeah. format there fantastic so when we actually run it along here you're gonna get that line of double-sided adhesive but it's in dot format Wait. Here we there go. we Perfect. go. Look. Can you see all those little tiny dots? And what that allows us to do is use it on the back of those intricate die cuts, and it, it's magic. 
I don't know what Leanne put in here, but it is magic because it misses the actual gaps. It just goes onto the cardstock. So what I've actually used, again, we've got some of these elements on the show. I've got those gorgeous lace frames from Sharon Callis's collection. And I took the, uh, the circular one, the vintage lace frames, and this is the bobbin lace. And what, is, what I've done is I've cut some of the elements out. So you get an outline die. This is the largest one. And then you get that beautiful, intricate lace frame. Uh -huh. And then you get a second size. So I've done the same again. I've used the outline die to do a, a mat. And then the lovely frame is going to be my layer. And then there is a little one that cuts out a, a small one that just fits the right shape in the middle. And I've just stamped on that ready. We're just going to layer all these up now. Uh, so we're going to use that dotty tape pen in conjunction with a little bit of foam tape. So again, in the past, I started out with this and I'd get my, I'd, I'd sort of thought, right, well, you know, I want it to be sticky. I'm working with sort of pearlescent cardstock. I'll get the colour out. The hole in the top of here is quite big. So you end up with lots of glue and nowhere for it to go. Yeah. So I thought, right, well, fair enough. We'll go down to the fine tip applicator. And again, you can sort of literally go around it, but you always seem to end up getting wet glue squidged through the gaps and it spoils it. Although it dries clear, you can still see elements of it. It may be sort of, you get bits stuck to it that you don't want stuck to it. So the fact that you've then got a dry glue that is just as sticky as your wet glue, as far as adhering something's concerned. But honestly, this is filled with magic. Because <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm Unicorn gonna turn dust. it over. It is. And really light touch, again, finger on the top of it like we did before. And I'm just gonna run it lightly over the back of my die cut and honestly it applies the dots to the back there's nothing happening on my mat here by it's the incredible. way it's incredible yeah just pop it over the back here and little light strokes on there you don't even have to do the flick as much when you're doing it lightly like this mm. okay all the way around there if you wanted to add different glue in the middle and not waste your dots, you can. So again, I'd be looking at possibly the double-sided tape runner or again, going back to my tacky and smoothing it out. But just for speed, I'm just going to pop a few more of those dots on the back. And then this is perfect because, you know, the die's done the work as far as lining something up is concerned. But you've got the knowledge now that you've got that lovely adhesive that you know is tried and tested and it's not gone in any of the, the gaps there. And I've not got anything. You did, this didn't stick to my mat anywhere. It's just magic. So I'm gonna do the same again. So I've got the slightly smaller one now. So turn it over onto the back. Get the right one, Jan. With my dots again. And again, they're, they're clearly marked. Yes. So you've got the double-sided one's got the, the solid strip on. The dots has got the dots on and the dotty one is slightly darker colour. Yeah. You can just see there, there's a slight difference in colour in them. I always end up picking the wrong one up even so. And but but again, it's good to know, isn't it, that you um, obviously you wouldn't use your tape pen necessarily to do what you're doing now, but flip reverse it. If you were halfway through a project and you were using your tape pen and that ran out, but you had your dotty tape pen, you could still use that for maybe that, like That's a, a good point, actually, Ben. Yeah, if I use my solid glue tape pen on this one, I would see the strips of the double-sided adhesive through yes. the gaps on the, the detail. So that wouldn't really be a goer. But what Ben's saying is if I was using this to mat and layer something and it ran out in the middle of the job, there's nothing to stop you using this one. Mm. It will still work as an adhesive just to stick two things together it doesn't have to be it's just that the technology in yes. that pen with the dots is perfect and again there's nothing here nothing sticking on my my glass mat it's just as if by magic i love I feel it like, yeah, magician. i love it no honestly. wires no, no smoke and mirrors i just all... love the fact that leanne and her team yeah. do all the hard work and then really we just get the chance to play with it all because you've got the confidence of knowing that this is going to do exactly what you want it to do so i just brought a, a little bit of foam there which i'm going to snip down a little bit and pop um on the back of there let me just get that layer off off the back and again because i'm sort of working fairly flat with this i'm just going to put one piece on the back there and then we can build these up and again all that work with the dies has been done so that you can actually get them lined up and then i put a little bit of tape 
at, on the back of that one ready. Yes. And just I just just picked a sentiment just for demo purposes, but this could be the beginnings of your card front there. And again, you know, adding maybe some flowers to it or something like that. I just made a mat and layer with the same paper pad, and you can see how that's becoming, you know. A project there I would just have something to embellish it whether that be flowers or something on the side there or maybe two corners just to operate there but you can see how that's coming together so as I say that dotty tape pen it's perfect the other thing with the tape pens just one last thing that I wanted to show you with that is decorative elements as well so again if you take I'll do it on the black card because you'll be able to see better but if you've got in your stash um, these are actually foils from our original cold foiling sets. Okay. So back at the, um, I'm saying back at the beginning, not quite at the beginning, but in some of the earlier signature collections, oh, there's not much left on that one, we got decorative foils uh, that are cold foils, Ben. They don't go with the foil press. Okay. Okay. So let me just swap that one because there's not actually a lot left on that one. Uh, I think they were in things like the... Um, Enchanted Forest collection and things like that had some in. There were two or three of them that had these coal foils before we bought the foil press out. So I know some of you guys will have these hidden somewhere. And again, beautiful colours to match the, um, the sets. Now, both of these tape pens will work with several elements. So if I, I've got back to my double-sided one here, and I'm going to run a line of double-sided tape on one bit and flick, and then I'm going to run my dotty tape pen and flick okay and then use a little bit of the foil over the top just add some pressure on here and again oh this is clever i see what you're doing yep. here love it when you peel it off you've got those decorative elements now Very let me clever. just pick that up so that you can see what we're talking about yes there. i love but can that. you see how you've got that solid line at the bottom and then at the top there you can even see the dots in it as well now, other things that you can do this with, um, my sample's actually on white card. You can see here where I've used the foiling. So we've got foil, pink foil and turquoise foil here. Yes. I've done it with gilding flakes. So if you've got any of the gilding flakes lying around, these will stick to your tape pen. Phenomenal. So you can actually make decorative edges with your gilding flakes. This is glitter. So we've got all our gorgeous fine glitters that you can get on the website. And again, they will stick to your tape pens. And then you can see just the slight difference at the end there with that dotty tape pen, how it's actually picked the foil up in the dot form. And that, as I say, works with both of them and these texts. We haven't got to the tape yet, but that technique will also work with your red line tape as well. So these elements will actually adhere to the red line tape. So sometimes when you get to a project and you get and you think, oh, it just wants a little bit of something to finish it off. It might just be a line of that tape with one of those decorative elements attached to it just to finish off your card. Absolutely okay, brilliant. Just one quick question to yep. wrap up on the uh, tape pens. Michelle's just asking on YouTube, is the tape runner safe for scrapbooking? Yes, they are acid free. Yeah. Yes. Excellent news. Loads of love for the tape pens. Um, Jane on YouTube is saying, love my tape pens. What a marvellous invention. Uh, the glue dot pen is definitely my favourite of the pens, says Marilyn Pico on YouTube. And I love the dotty tape pen, says Sandy Ballinger, uh, especially for sentiment die words. Yet again, uh, yep. super, super handy for that. Uh, I think I mentioned when I was doing a bit of um, crafting with my daughter a few weeks back, we were using the dotty tape pen because we had uh, those um, sentiment die cuts that we were um, whacking through our MIDI. Uh, and the, the dotty tape was absolutely perfect for those. Uh, Deborah Allen on Facebook just saying, I've just placed an order for all kinds of glue. Uh, spent enough for free shipping, so I'm excited. Uh, tape the show so I can go back for reference. Thank you, Jan, for all your great tips. That is the brilliant thing here, is that we have got a whole selection of um, different adhesives for you. But yeah, the great thing is, is that you get these home and then you're not going to go home and then go, what do I use that one for again? which glue do I use here? Because you've got this show, right? So even if you can't see it all now, subscribe to us on YouTube. You can come back and check out this show. There's plenty of other shows out there as well um, on our channel to do with these. So you've got so much as far as kind of tutorials are concerned. Basically what I'm saying is, you get your seven piece uh, starter selection today for 19 pounds or 33.50, and you also get a free two hour tutorial with Jan thrown in uh, free of charge, which I just think is amazing. So uh, again, if you just need to recap and you're thinking, or well, maybe you 
you missed the explanation earlier on about the um, the collar, the tacky glue, you can re-watch the show. You've also got your um, 3D glue in there as well. Don't forget you get the 3D glue kit included, so you've got everything you need to dispense that um, nice and safely and easily. You've got foam pads in this collection. You've got your red liner tape in this collection, and you've got one of each of those glue pens as well. So you've got your glue tape pen and that dotty glue tape pen as well. It's a brilliant bundle for starting off. You've got a bit of everything um, and it is, I suppose in a way, a bit of a try me kit also because if you're not quite sure uh, which adhesive you're going to get on with best, you're not spending a fortune to get a little bit of everything. So you can you know, give each of those adhesives a go, see which we like and you can come back and buy more of, you know, if you think to yourself, well, actually I like, the, um, I like the all purpose glue the best, well, come back and buy more of that. Or if you think, oh, actually I prefer the tape pens, come back and get more of those. You've got a bit of everything. But for for crafters who do like a bit of everything, as far as the adhesive is concerned, you have got that right there. 19 or 33.50, saving a quarter, and then saving another 20%, of course, if you are a uh, Platinum member as well. I cannot, but I've just looked at the time. We've got 45 minutes left. Uh, seriously, I don't know where the time goes. Um, now is a good time to check out your baskets if you've got stuff in your baskets. And also, now is a great time if you've been thinking, oh, there's a question I want to ask. Get it in, uh, and then we'll get more questions thrown down way very very shortly indeed um, if it's red liner tape you're wondering about that's the topic we're going to be talking about next before that though here is a little video which will explain more about our club inspire welcome to club inspire our free loyalty club as a member of the club you can save up to 20 percent every time you shop with us for every pound you spend, whether it's in one of our stores or on our website, you'll collect one loyalty point. The more points you have, the more benefits you'll receive. As a welcome present, we'll give you 20% discount with your very first order. Once you place your first order, you'll be given 250 points straight away, making you a bronze member. This will mean that you'll receive a 5% discount on all of your purchases until the end of the next calendar year, plus priority postage. 500 points takes you up to silver membership where you'll get 10% discount plus free shipping when you spend over £20. When you get to 750 points you'll become a gold member which gets you a whopping 15% discount on every order and will ship them to you completely free no matter how big or small they are. Spend over £25 and we'll send them to you via our premium next day delivery carrier service. When you reach 1,500 points, you'll become a Platinum member, giving you the same shipping benefits as a Gold member, but with the added bonus of a massive 20% discount on all of your purchases. Now on top of that, you'll receive exclusive discounts, sneak peeks of brand new products, special offers and money-saving vouchers. You'll have access to an exclusive secret Facebook group to meet like-minded friends to find out information first and to be inspired by all the crafty makes. We'll send you a completely free quarterly Digimag direct into your inbox, giving you lots of hints, tips, inspiration, additional offers and some sneaky behind the scenes gossip from the team. So what are you waiting for? Become a member of our club today. Loving this show. There's so many lovely comments coming in. Kay Reston on Facebook saying, Jan, thank you for explaining all the glues for anything we use. A refresher course is always good. Yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. Even if you've been crafting for a while, sometimes you get a bit of a brain freeze and you can, oh, which one do I need again? It's great that you can come back and watch this in your own time. Tansy Pansy, I've only learned the importance of correct glue since I started watching CCTV. Before, I just used whatever was closest to hand. Uh, so it was a little bit hit and miss. Now everything is so much more professional and secure. That's it. And as I said, for me, uh, as well I always feel like I'm learning um, but I'm going to learn even more uh, just a little bit later on because there's glues coming up on this glue school that I've not seen before um, so again you, if you think you know everything you might learn something uh, as we get towards the end of the show as well lots of love for the dotty tape pen uh, Jean just saying it is a game changer do you want a couple of quick questions before we move on to the red line of yep. tape uh, Marilyn saying can you ask Jan uh, what is the best glue to use for loose glitter to embellish does that come back to what you've just showed us for loose glitter to embellish embellish mm. um yeah the ones that i was just talking about with the tape pens these are actually um let me just grab those from the side of me these are actually off our, our website these are a crafters companion product which is a loose glitter it's a really fine glitter in absolutely gorgeous 
Just look at those. Yeah. But yeah, those will adhere to either your adhesive in the tape pen. Yes. Or the red line tape that we're going to talk about now. Okay. So you'll get the same decorative effect with both of those. And because the tape comes in different widths, you can, you know, you could do a thick line and a thin line as a decorative element with it. Okay. And um, Eve B, there's a bit of a typo here, but I think it's along the lines of. So she, she loved the ideas with the tape and the foil. So you use the cold foil could yes. you do the same with the foil that you would use for the, the foil that you'd use with your foil i haven't foil? tried it i must admit with the hot foil i am very much a girl that likes things horses for courses yeah. so to me hot foil works with my foil press uh, i haven't tried it to be honest that's something i can try when i get home uh, if you've got the hot foil out there you know and you're willing to give it a go i mean it's only gonna you know just try a little tiny bit don't do a great big long decorative line of it just try a little bit but it is paper crafting foil um the reason that it works with the foil press, the, the, the mechanics behind that is the heat is what encourages it to leave the carrier right. sheet. So without the heat, I don't actually know the answer to that. I would have to have a go with it Ooh. and see. So that's something I can check out for you guys, yeah. Excellent. But to me, hot foil is for the foil press, cold foil is for other uses. So that, that's how my, my OCD works like that. <laughs> Things have to have it, their own little compartments, but yeah. We could give it a try and I'll, I'll see what happens. Excellent stuff. Keep those questions coming. You've got another 40 minutes. And don't forget, of course, if you do ask a question during this show, uh, you'll be a step closer to winning prizes. Prizes for questions, I hear you ask. Yes, <laughs> we are giving away prizes. Uh, if you ask a question or comment on Facebook and YouTube uh, as part of National Craft Month, we're giving away prizes each and every day. Uh, today's prize is amazing. You get loads of goodies. Basically, all of this you could win today for just asking a question or leaving a comment. Uh, and of course, uh, we'll be announcing the winner in Creative Craft a little bit later on i would say get your comments in if you want, want to be in with a chance of winning before eight o'clock because the draw tends to take place sort of uh, after eight o'clock uk time uh, right let's get onto red liner tape so your two-piece collection details you're seeing on the screen there is thus uh, you're going to get your 12 um, millimeter and also your three millimeter uh, red liner tape 10 meters on each roll 550 or 1050 is the deal today lots of chatter about the red liner tape so um let's get on to this because i know jan's got um, lo lots to talk about so i always think of red liner tape jan as a, a tape that i'm going to use mainly for construction is that right spot on absolutely spot on yeah it is really 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 sticky double-sided tape and i think the fact that you've got i've got my packets here with them in but i've got the ones open that i've been using so i can show you these uh, in a bit more detail so the three mil is a really fine one which is what i'm going to use on the project coming up next and then you've got the 12 mil if you've got areas that are a bit thicker that you want to stick and again so i've got some top tips for you to use it uh, but it is really really sticky so for construction products it's perfect uh, again two different schools of thought i know a lot of people like to work and you saw me at the beginning uh, i think my box should be well and truly dry if you're watching mm. from the top of the show we use the tacky glue to actually seal the box and it works perfectly if you're happy to wait for it to dry no problem like i said to you at the top of the show i'm not very patient so i would always go for my red line tape if i was doing sort of some kind of construction and by construction i mean things like boxes and bags and things like that that you're actually making a 3d finished element with and bearing in that in mind that's what i've actually brought to demo for you because again we've got these go these are absolutely beautiful we've got a couple of the faceted favor boxes on so just for giving little gifts in or if you wanted to you know even if you were gonna i know uh, in the past when people don't know what to buy they pop some money in your card yes just how much nicer would it look just popped in a gift box or something like that so in here you've got the metal to make the box and you also get the instructions in there so i'm not going to pay a lot of attention to the actual box itself but you actually get your concept die which you will cut twice so i've literally done the first one you can see there how it's matched the um move those out of the way match the shape and it puts all your score lines in so that you can fold all the edges in and you've got your glue tabs all good to go okay and it asks you to do that twice so i've done that twice in some pearlescent cardstock i think this is from the caring thoughts um 
plain paper pad, if I remember rightly. And then I've actually used one of the central dies here. You get a couple of different squares to cut an aperture out of the middle. And then also in here, you get lots of decorative elements. And I'm going to use lots of these pieces. And I've die cut them already because I wanted to concentrate on the actual adhesive part today. So I've used some of the internal ones to make a little frame, which I'm going to decorate the top of the box with. And I've also used some of these external elements here to make these gorgeous little pieces that we're going to decorate the sides of the box with. So I've actually done some of the gluing already. Um, but what I wanted to show you is once you start popping things together on here, you can see how we've got that beautiful, they're just all cut, they all match perfectly in there and I've got some mint green centura pearl with some pink um, pattern paper that's been die cut over the top of it so that's one section we were talking about acetate earlier which is the worst thing ever <laughs> to bring you on tv <laughs> but you can see I've actually put my red line tape on there ready and I'm going to use that to stick this I want to pop some acetate inside the aperture so we'll start there and I find my pokey tool is the best thing to lift the edges of this off and one of the top tips with red line tape is once you've placed it on and I'll show you what I mean in a second on the box it, you need to give the line the red liner a really good rub to get rid of all the air bubbles inside the or underneath the, the tape so I'll show you what I mean we've got that in there and then I've also popped again you can see all of this you know you could do it with your wet glue if you wish and if you were using wet glue because I'm working on pearlescent card I'd be using my tacky glue I yeah. would probably be using it out of my fine applicator because I'm working on very thin elements and also like I did at the top of the show I would be smoothing it out with my finger and then popping it to one side while I worked on something else to let it cure and go tacky so again you can see there's a time element involved in that whereas with the red line tape once you've got um, this ready you know it's going to stick to your project and it's done you've not got to worry about waiting for things to uh, to get tacky you've not got to wait for it to dry it literally it does the job and I just think it's so much easier uh, than, than sort of waiting around for things to dry I have other things to do <laughs> than waiting for yeah. things to dry so I'm just going to pop that as a decorative element around the top there and okay. again once you've pressed it down it's in place it's not going to go anywhere and then I've actually started putting my tape on here. So I've used the three mil tape here, the little thin one, because we're just working with little glue tabs. And again, I've done most of them ready, but right up against the score line, but not over the score line. I'm just going to place it down and use my little snip there just to snip off the edge. And I'm just going to do those last two. Whoops, there we go. And I've come up to the score line, but not over it. And then just snipping it away at the edge. And then either with your finger, or I tend to use my bone folder, just rub over the top of the red line. Yes. And what you'll see is it go from like a sort of um, a translucent effect to sort of quite a, a bold red. And what it's doing is pressing out any air bubbles that may be underneath that red line. And you'll find it much easier to take off once you start releasing the, um, the items. So again, I've got my two last little pieces to decorate here. And because I'm on that pearl cardstock, I'm going to use my wet tacky glue just to pop those on which is in that lovely these little fine tip applicators are amazing and they're free within one of the bundles honestly they just finish everything off you know you've got that glue your choice and you can put your um your kalal glue in there as well yes so just with your tacky you just need to rub and just give it a second to grab okay uh, the collection with your um your fine tip uh, applicator is bottom of your screen right now. The eight piece kit also comes with uh, two bottles of your all purpose, two of your tacky glue, and then you're getting two lots of the uh, the bottles, but you get two within each. And those uh, are coming for free, which I, I still can't believe. But don't you worry about that. Uh, 15 96 or 28 88. So many lovely comments coming in. And do you know what I'm loving about this personally as well? Do you know, a lot of the time I'm still watching, and I feel like I'm learning, but today, having listened to what Jan was saying earlier on, I, I know what she's going to say next. I know which glue she's going to pick up next. Yep. And I, I, I'm feeling educated today. Oops. Whether I'll still remember this tomorrow, 
uh, is another thing. But here's the brilliant thing. If you, like me, have got a brain like a goldfish, and you can go back and watch it on YouTube tomorrow because you've already subscribed, haven't you? Yes, of course you have. Uh, that's the great thing about these shows. Uh, as Jam was saying earlier on, if you don't manage to catch it all today, head to our YouTube page, hit that subscribe button, uh, and then you've got all of the shows there to go back and, and literally the show. I mean, there's, there must be hundreds of shows on there that you can watch back on there every is, single honestly. subject. And I mean, I still go to them sometimes, Ben. You know, it's like if I've not been able to watch a live show, yeah. if I've got a new product on the show, I'll go back and I'll watch the launch day show and see what was going on on that particular mm. show. You know, it's educational for us too, not just for you guys out there. So there, it's really handy to be able to go back and re-watch these. You can pause them. If you're wanting to make something with us, literally do a little bit, pause it, catch up, put us back on again. And it's, you know, you, we're there in your living room literally to work. Yeah. So I've just put glue. It says to put glue on all the tabs, but by doing it this way, we're literally, we're going to stick the tabs on this one together. So literally, I've got the two here are going to fit and, and what I'm going to do is turn one of them over. In fact, we'll do those two over and they're actually going to fit on top of the two here. So I've just put the glue on one side. So what I'm doing is just butting up the score lines. The same on this one. Not overlapping them, just butting them up. And yes. you can see how we're sort of getting to a point now where we've got these facets coming along. So then we're going to come along and pop the next two together. And I think I've done this in the right order. We'll soon find we'll out. We'll find out in a minute, won't we, Jen? Yep. And again, turn them inside, pop the next two together. And you can see now how I've, have I done this right? No, I haven't. Hang on a second. Just bear with me. That's all right. I need to offset it. So just very quickly, yeah, it should be that way like that. That's okay. it. Um, yeah. Just by the way, whilst you're just popping that together, you know we were chatting earlier on about the hot foil and whether that demo still works. Yes. Deborah on Facebook. Blen. Blen? She didn't say Blen at all. She said Ben. Blen? She said Ben. Please tell Jan, I just tried the tape pen and the hot foil, and yes, it worked. Excellent. Well done. Yep. Um, I yep. put the tape pen on a white piece of paper and gold foil, and it came off nice on the paper. It works great. So there you go. Deborah Brilliant. Sutherland um, has tried that well for us. Well done. Well yep. done, Deborah. Thank you for letting us know. That's awesome. I love the fact that you guys are trying these things out uh, as we While are. we're actually on air. Yeah, yep. love that idea. Yeah, um, so it's just offsetting those ones like so, okay. it, rather than lining them up. And um, one quick question whilst you're just putting this together as well to do with the uh, the red lighter tape. This is a great question. Martha Hampton on Facebook says, do you have any tips for getting the static red film off your hands and projects? Um, That's a great question. One of the best things out. Have I popped it in my... Uh... I think, yeah, the little, you've seen when I'm stamping, you've seen me using oh, the little anti-static bag. Yeah. Yeah. If you actually sort of give your fingers a rub on this first before you start using it, it does make it, you see, they, these are not, not sticking as much now. You can actually get rid of them. All right. If you haven't got one of those, a little bit of talc. Uh, baby talc or a little bit of cornstarch, something like that. And it does make them less because they, they do end up, you, you end up cooking the tea. And fa my, my husband will say, oh, yeah, Jan, you've cut your arm. And it's actually <laughs> a bit a of bit the of red tape. line stuck to my arm, you know, where it's come from the, the craft room. Yeah, it does get everywhere, I must admit. But yeah, just a little bit of the anti-static actually works wonders in there. So those last two pieces, I'm just tucking the tabs in together and you can see how those last two just fit inside there. And you've got that beautiful little faceted. Honestly, I think it's such a unique little shape. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. So I've stuck it all together for demo purposes. Obviously, if you were going to use it as a gift box, leave the last two pieces without any tape on and you would just fold those on the inside as, a, as an opener to pop something inside. But yeah, absolutely gorgeous. So that was the, uh, the faceted favour box. And then I've just got a little tiny embellishment there to go on the top just to keep it and this is all done with the, the only thing that I've added to it is the little heart yes all the circle dies all the, the squares to make the frame and everything all those lovely edge pieces are all part of the die set all I did was just cut out a little heart with one of my in fact I think it was a punch that I've used just to pop it on there but really really pretty and the fact that that's now secure I don't have to wait for anything mm. to dry I've not got to pack clips on it to hold it in place it's there it's ready you know you could actually put something in that now and pass it to somebody as a gift knowing full well that it's it's together, it's solid. 
Brilliant so, demo. Again, if you yep. want to go for that fasted favor box, by the way, details just here, bottom of your screen, 2208 or 2548 is the deal on that. If you want to go for, yes, you get the favor um, bubble and the box as well. So uh, 20 elements in total there. Um, if you want to go for the red liner take two, that is the deal for you. You're going to get the um, 12 mil and the three mil. Um, and 10 meters of each, super handy. 550 or 1050 is the deal on that one. If you just want to go for the red liner tape, then there is that bundle. Right, let's just quickly go back to the star of the show. I think certainly the bundle which you are snapping up left, right and center because you have got a bit of everything and this appeals to everybody as far as I'm concerned because if you're just somebody who wants to try a little bit of everything, you've got a little bit of everything there. If you're somebody who is a beginner and you're thinking, oh, I'm not quite sure which one I need to go for, everything is in there for you. And if you're a more seasoned crafter, let's just say, once again, you've got um, a, a stock up there of all of the kind of main adhesives, if you like. You've got your um, foam pads in there, you've got your red liner tape, you've got your glue tape pen, your dotty tape pen, you've got your um, all-purpose glue, you've got your tacky glue, and also you've got your 3D glue kit in there too. I know we're only just displaying the glue itself, but you do get the whole kit within that bundle. It is a fantastic collection. Uh, the fact that you're saving over a quarter on it today and then your Club Inspire saving on top makes that a fantastic deal. And let's be honest, where would we be within our crafts without our adhesives? You know, I would say that this has not been the most um, kind of over the top flamboyant show with, you know, kind of amazing finished projects, but actually it's been one of those shows where we have brought you the education, brought you the information and actually brought you great deals on all of the goodies that you need to be able to do those flamboyant things, those amazing amazing projects because without your adhesives you wouldn't be able to do it. Um, so get these today, £19, 33 is the deal. As I said, if you're already thinking, oh, I'm quite stuck up on adhesive, get more now whilst these deals are in place because you never want to get halfway through a product uh, and run out of your adhesives. Um, Val McGrath on Facebook says, Jan and Ben, you are making this so easy to understand. I'm not doing much for it to mean Jan <laughs> making it easy to understand. And I tell you how easy she's making it to understand, I'm understanding it and if I understand, everybody else will understand. So that's how great of a job uh, Jan is doing today. Uh, Martha Franklin on YouTube says, thank you for this class. Jan, you are an excellent teacher and Ben, you are very intuitive. Never been called that before, but thank you. Uh, I think that's good. Uh, <laughs> enjoy watching you both. Well, thank you, Martha. Not still, uh, not still, not too late still to get your questions in. If you want to get social with us, details at the bottom of the screen there, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, any more questions, even if it's um, adhesives that we've already covered in this show, um, we can always go back and um, you know get those questions answered. And even if you think, oh, I bet they've asked that question already, ask again, because if you have joined us late, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll get that question um, asked once again um okay we have had a couple of questions i've not seen this but um producer erin just tells me so ribbon uh jan yep. if i'm wanting to adhere ribbon to my project what's the best glue for that um again choices you know choices and again this is something i would say try and see which is your preference i'm going to go back to my tacky glue all right remember i said this will cover everything that your kalal glue doesn't. Yes. So matting and layering with the kalal, paper and cardstock, anything else, if you want a wet glue, you're going to tacky glue. And I'm just gonna bring this in, I didn't show you this earlier, but all the bits and pieces on my piece of mount board here have been stuck on there with tacky glue. So I've actually got on here, I didn't actually pick any ribbon out, but I have got lace, but it would work for the ribbon as well. But again, lightest little touch, you don't want the wet glue to soak through mm. your ribbon. And if that's a concern, then I would go back to our red line tape and run a line of tape across your project where you want the ribbon to go and stick your ribbon over the top of it, okay? But I've got all sorts, you know, I've got pearl embellishments on here, I've got buttons, I've got resin, I've got metal embellishments, you know, paper flowers, uh, paper art straws, I've got wooden embellishments, cork, you name it, those have all been done with the tacky glue. So when you're thinking embellishments, you think in your tacky glue. But remember what I said about popping it down and leaving it for 30 seconds or so for it to cure and go tacky. So if you pop it on and then put your embellishment straight on, you'll find it slipping about and maybe not sticking straight away. But if you popped your glue, so here for example, pop a little bit of glue, and I mean a little bit, it doesn't need loads. If you put a lot on, all you're gonna do is get it squidging out everywhere. And then you've got, although it dries clear, you would still see sort of a residue of it on your 
project so a little tiny bit if you've not got enough and it doesn't stick you can always add a bit more but once you've got a big blob of it down there it's not so easy to get rid of so a little bit down smooth it out with your finger and then leave it for about sort of 30 seconds or so for what we call cure and you'll see it change you'll see it go from sort of glossy to like a tacky finish and once it's got to that stage you can then pop your embellishment on and these are proper you know again we're well stuck down on there nothing's coming off this has traveled all the way in my bag i popped it in my bag when i got here you know even sort of fancy little embellishments like the little the dragonfly is actually fabric here so again all those different types of things that are what i would call they all fit in sort of the embellishment category whether they be lace ribbon pearls anything like that back to your tacky glue if you're not as fond of the tacky glue the next item we've got coming up is the hot glue gun so for a lot of embellishments the hot glue gun will work but obviously things like lace and ribbon you're not going to yeah. get on very well with the hot glue so uh, as i say it goes back to that horses for courses just before we get on to the glue gun uh, christine says what is the shelf life of tapes and glues um, i also have to deal with temperature changes in my craft room i do have a heater for winter and air conditioning for summer so, so generally, I mean, that's, that's quite a difficult one to ask, answer, I suppose. Well, I, I can actually answer that, Ben, oh, okay. because I work in my conservatory, as you know, and it is extreme temperatures. It yeah. is very, very cold in the winter and extremely like a greenhouse in the summer. And I've got an aircon unit that works as a heater and a cooler. So I am literally in that same environment. But I keep all mine in a cupboard. If you leave it sort of out on your desk, it's open to those temperatures. So if the sunlight's coming in, it's going to heat it up. And if you've ever had the situation, and this is something else that I bet you'll uh, you'll have had happen before say for example you've opened your glue to work with okay and all of a sudden it starts bubbling out of the top and pouring out and you think oh my goodness it's like Vesuvius erupting where's it gonna go what's happening if that happens unscrew and actually release the air that's inside it all right whether it be a tacky or a, it's happened with the kalal with me before I've, I've sort of done what i've needed to do with the kalal put it on my project stood it up and it's just kept pumping mm. out of the top and it's about the pressure that builds up when the glues heat up so just release them at the cat at the main cap and let that extra out and then pop the lid back on again and you'll find that it'll stop coming out of the top even when you close the lid you still got like glue everywhere all over the bottle and then you end up stuck to the bottle and I'm, I'm talking about these things because I've, I've done them all I've been there you know this has happened to me even the little applicator does it sometimes and the glue starts pumping out of the top again just separate it in the middle let that excess out not the glue out let the excess sort of air out and then seal it back up again and you'll find that it stops but yeah if you're sort of working in those temperatures make sure that you've got them put away so i've normally got i've got glues in the drawer that i work at the side of me which is where my day-to-day -day stuff lives and then any spare that i sort of got as reserves actually stay in one of the cupboards so that they're out of that and yes the temperature's still going to drop and it's still going to raise but they are enclosed in a space and i've not had any trouble with mine i mean i do buy glue in bulk because of the amount of work that we do and i've never really got to one where i've opened it and it's not done the job i've wanted it to do we are moving on to the glue gun just when you thought there couldn't be any more adhesives <laughs> there's there's plenty more to come as i said I, I i know all of the adhesives that we've shown you so far if you think you know th th this is the last one now no there's more adhesives but this is the glue gun right uh, we'll, we'll let jan talk you through this is a uk only deal so apologies to our us viewers uh, but this is um your uh, your handy glue gun um, it comes with 10 of your glue sticks too so you are ready to go definitely more than enough uh, to get you going normally 11.48 uh, today's price on this uk only as i've said 9.99 saving 10 percent uh, and you'll get another 20 percent off that deal if you are uh, a platinum member so when am I using my glue gun then? Because I've got all these other glues. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself, well, I, 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 I can't need anything else. So, I mean, when does this come into its own? This one's sort of the daddy of the glues. Oh, okay. And I'm not going to spend long on this because it's fairly self-explanatory glue, uh, glue, this one. Um, it, it works in the basis of, obviously, you've got the glue is solid in a stick. It feeds into the end of the glue gun. You can see mine just popping out at the end here. And the trigger squeezes it through the heat element in the end and it makes it liquid. And this will stick pretty much anything, all right? It's a quick 
fix and you'll often again see us using this when we're demoing because it, it's sort of an instant stick uh, it's very very hot so I would actually recommend that you are very careful they always say that crafters make good thieves Ben because we've not got any fingerprints left because literally <laughs> this will take your fingerprint off right. and again I'm speaking from experience you try to get rid of the stuff and it's that hot that it's burning your finger while Owie. you're trying to pull it off so please be careful be mindful if you're using one but again all those embedded embellishments that I've just shown you on here the majority of those may be apart from the lace I could have stuck on here just as easily with the glue gun it's an alternative it's a fast one it dries pretty much straight away within sort of minutes if I'm doing mixed media work I will often put my embellishments on for longevity they're going to stay there with the glue gun so I'm not going to go into depth with this what I thought I would just do just to show you it in action is the the little piece that we made earlier with the decoupage which is is pretty much set I'm just going to squeeze the trigger and it just pops out blobs of glue and you do need to work fairly fast with this you can see that this is like the Kalal 3d glue but it the difference is is that this would pretty much dry instantly within a couple of minutes and you've got something on there now that isn't going to go anywhere so it is fairly explanatory with the glue gun it's it's good for pretty much anything the only thing that I'd be careful with as I say is working on things like acetate if it isn't heat resistant acetate the temperature could melt the acetate or at least make it all crinkly um, but yeah any embellishments that you want to stick whether it be to cardstock whether it be to uh, MDF anything like that I would be using the glue gun and the only little tip I can give you for that is as your glue sticks running out and you've got to pop the other one in the end melt the end of it on the top of your heat tip at the front and then stick it to the one behind it and it will pull it through at the same time because quite often and again I'm talking from experience you're trying to work the glue gun and you've not realized that when you picked it up the new ones just fell out the <laughs> back so yeah just by sticking it to this one and pulling it through together little top tip for you there but I'm not really going to spend much longer on that one Ben lovely well there you go uh, nice introduction to your glue gun if you want to go for yours today uh, 9.99 is the deal for the glue gun uh, and you get 10 of your replacement glue sticks to go with it so plenty to get you going uh, so you don't get stuck uh, right uh, like right we're gonna look at glues um, which I well I didn't know there were more glues but there are and the first up um, is your textile glue. Uh, um, 269 or 404 is the deal on this. Um, normally 299 or 449, so you're saving 10%. So your textile glue, I'm guessing, and I could be wrong here, is this the, the kind of glue that I might see Bernie use, for example? Yeah, it literally is what it says on the tin, Ben. It looks, it's presented to you very, very similar to the Kalal or at the all purpose there, but you can see that the Kalalt all purpose is, is more of a transparent bottle, whereas this is pure white. Still got the red lid on the top. So if you're actually looking, I used to be very careful when our customers were shopping in the store, uh, when I worked at Chesterfield store, because they'd grab one of these, they'd see the bottle shape, they'd see the red lid, they'd pick them up. When they got to the counter, I would always check that, are you actually looking for the textile glue or did you want all purpose? And yeah. nine times out of 10, they were looking for the all purpose. So if, you, if you're looking at them on a shelf, Shelf, just make sure you read the labels properly but yeah textile glue literally for sticking fabrics together uh, all sorts of different fabrics we do have I haven't actually got it with me but we do have a specialist one for felt felt behaves differently to a lot of other fabrics and I'm not an expert on fabrics our Bernie would be able to tell you much more about this but we do one that looks again very similar I think it has a blue lid and it is specifically for sticking felt but the best tip I can give you with this is when you're sticking fabrics if you're wanting to use them on your paper crafting projects is again a little tiny bit of glue on both sides of your fabric so both pieces that you're working with let it go tacky and then stick them together all right and again I'm not going to do much more than that with these Ben um, there is your felt glue by the way we have got that uh, yep. on the show so that is your oh, felt it's a glue. yellow one is it, it is a yellow yeah yep. feel that it's felt <laughs> oh dear oh so predictable isn't he so predictable uh 269 uk only for your felt glue if you want to go for that uh and then we've also got now st now this is styrocol i'm taking a bit of a, a, a punt here on this uh, styro so i'm thinking start polystyrene yep it's so with it it's with it aren't is that you? what it is it's yeah. a complete guess yeah. is that what it is it is yeah and again 
looks very similar to your all-purpose but if you remember I said the main thing about all-purpose glue is that it's solvent okay and solvent will slowly eat away at your polystyrene okay it's ah. sort of almost like eats a hole in it if you do it as an experiment and pop some onto the polystyrene it literally just starts start, start eating away at it so this one's been made in a manner that it's got a different element in here allows you to if you're using uh, little polystyrene elements to make christmas decorations or easter decorations anything like that you can buy polystyrene in all sorts of different shapes this is the best thing for adhering anything to it and again it's a special one it will last you know if you buy and you think oh I only want to use a little bit out of it as long as you're secure in your bottles and they're airtight your glue should last it shouldn't go off it shouldn't dry in the bottle it's the air that does the damage with the glue okay so again specialist for its own purpose so that is your styrocol 269 um, saving 10% next up this is the one I feel like I'm playing chess here <laughs> uh, next is the one with the blue top and this is your varnish your varnish glue or the uh, the vernis coal um, as they, they they've they've called it here so is, is this one is this one gonna stick and then give you like a a, a sort of a varnished finish it's good it's I'm, good i'm being funny Jan. he's not had any tuition i, I haven't. haven't been been sort of prepping him i've earlier. been hanging around with you too long you yeah, see that's what it is i'm learning. learning yeah but yeah exactly what it says on it again vernis it's a mixture of adhesive and varnish in the same Tub. Now we had a question about paper napkins earlier, Ben. So I'm going to come back to that. I haven't forgotten and we're going to do a quick demo with that. So any of you guys that are journalers out there, I know some of my friends love making um, paper journals and they use a lot of this technique in the journals to make things like um, little, little tags or it may be a journal card, something like that, maybe even the front cover of a journal. But it's a great one to take into your paper crafting technique. So I've actually brought this one. It's one of my favourites, this. And this is actually been bought in a pack. All right. It is actually a full napkin. I've just cut it up. You get four of the same design. And again, these were off uh, that lovely World Wide Web. But I just think for, for crafting wise, it's, it's a great sort of uh, design. You can use it in its entirety or you can actually take it to pieces. So I've cut it into four. You can see here. All right. So the four the same. I've used one of them already. And what I'm going to do is take the backing off it. All right. So the easiest way to do that literally is to just lift the back. And I want to just take that that two. It's a two ply tissue. If it's a three ply, you literally just want the front one. So I'm going to take that bit away. We don't need that bit. And then the vernis skull, literally, you want your paintbrush. And I've actually got a pot with water in here because again it's all water based and what I'm going to do is actually undo again and these are all the same mechanism don't try and pull the tops off them they just unscrew to release the top of the uh, the glue here they actually stay in place so you don't need to screw it until it actually comes off and then I'm going to be quite liberal with this over my piece and this is just a piece of plain cardstock and then I'm literally going to brush it across all the, the, the card. I want it nice and smooth again. I don't want those ripples in it from the glue. Pop it on here. Okay. Cover that piece of cardstock. And then literally, I'm going to lay my piece of serviette or my paper napkin over the top. So okay. again, I'm just going to aim to try and get it as straight as I can. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's a serviette. She's saying in my ear, yeah. It's, yeah, sorry, Erin. It's a, a serviette. serviette. You, yep. you call napkins in America, napkins. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. yeah. I call it a serviette as well, quite posh, isn't it? And serviette? then literally, I'm going to pop some over the top as well. And just gently from the middle, I'm going to put this all the way over the top and literally brush the, any bubbles that you've got in that napkin out to the edges. So from the middle there, and what happens is it sticks it down and it also gives it a really nice sort of glaze over the top just to make it sealant and then you can start and use it in your projects. So again, I'm going all the way, make sure particular attention to the edges of it to make sure that it's all sealed down. And then again, I would leave it to dry probably for a good, um, I would say 20 to 30 minutes to make sure that that glue soaked in and it's done its job and it's all dried. Okay, so that's the actual application 
it's water based so all I'm going to do now is actually pop my brush for the time being in a pot of water and then I can clean it out afterwards okay so that's going in there and then I've got a little bit of uh, paper towel there pop that somewhere nice and flat to dry and then I've got one that I did earlier on um, which once it's dry I'm just going to seal that glue up again once it's dry you've actually got a piece that is proper again yep yeah and you can see again if we can just I've picked the white again haven't I with the black but you can just on the if you look at the butterfly there oh yeah you can just see oh, that the, it's got that little bit of glaze going yeah, on, yeah. on it yeah and what I would what would sort of planning to do all I've done is mounted it on some black cardstock just to frame it with it being black and then once this one's dry you can cut elements of it out so I could cut the butterfly out for example and everything would stay in place and then actually use that with some of my maybe the 3d gel for dimension and decoupage it up on here and then I I just got I'd got a little um, wording embellishment there that you can throw into the mix if you wish and again you know you can make cards out of these you could use them on your scrapbook process but as I say I know a lot of the journalers out there mm. you can get some beautiful napkins you can get them with floral elements on animals on you name it you can also cut out elements you don't have to use the whole thing so for example you could have just tore out the butterfly and popped that onto cardstock to make it into an embellishment and then the, the one of the other questions that we were asked earlier in the show Ben oh, was the about the uh, jigsaw puzzles Yes. This works perfectly as a sealant for your jigsaw puzzles. So a real jigsaw, if you want to keep it and put it on the wall or put it in a frame, once you've actually put your jigsaw together and made it, just like I did with the brush, pop some of this over the top and it will act as a glaze and it will seal it. All right, once you've positioned it onto whatever you're displaying it on. It will also put a really nice glaze. Any of you guys that have just bought our jigsaw dies, all right, it will also put a really nice glaze over those as well if you're wanting to keep them as a picture rather than breaking them up into jigsaw pieces. So yeah, varnish and a glue all in one tub. This yep. is amazing. Are you kidding me? Varnish glue, 539 UK only. Maureen says, wow, I never knew there were so many different glues. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, and Karen says, I didn't realise there are so many different colour glues. I know. Right, we're not even done. We've got three more to quickly show you in the last six minutes. Uh, next up, we're going to have a look at, the, uh, now I'm a bit stuck here, we're going to have a look at the Strass There's glue. no clues on that one, is no, there? <laughs> all I'm thinking, I don't know why, I think Strass sounds to me like strong, so is it some kind of super glue? Uh, not necessarily, I would go more for Strass rhymes with glass. Oh, uh, okay. So more so, and again, it's just a specialist glue, you know, mm. you can add it to your stash if you wish. Um, it is made specifically for adding things like rhinestones to, uh, to projects. So those lovely little shiny embellishments that we use. Yeah. Uh, it's a really fine point on the end of the tube here. Um, so it is made specifically for that as a specialist glue. So it's one that you can add to your stash if you wish. It's entirely up to you. It's just in the range there as part of their collection. That is 269, your 25ml bottle of Strass glue, UK only. Next up, book binding glue. Again, mm. these are all specialist glues, Ben. So they're all for a particular um, way of doing things. So any of you guys out there that like making your own books, so sort of whether they be mini albums, things like that, uh, you will understand what I mean about covering things like chipboard. So I know you guys start out with a chipboard, not a chipboard. Um, what am I thinking? Is it chipboard? I think it is chipboard, yeah. You'll end up, and you can get the grey board as well. So you'll cut out your pieces to make the front of your album, the back of your album, the spine, and then cover it with papers and things like that. It's just a specialist way of actually a glue that's perfect for the job. Any kind of threadless book binding. So if you're wanting to attach things in without stitching them in, it's just been designed purely for that purpose. Uh, 539 on that UK only once again uh, we've also got photo glue on the show should you want that uh, we've also got your uh, shake a uh, double-sided shaker foam on the show for you um, as well so uh, again earlier on if on craft what you picked up on the um, deal with the hat we had on the shaker dies then uh, perfect 899 
or eight ninety nine is the deal on this. Uh, you've got some over there, Jan. Yeah, you've seen us use this loads mm. of times, Ben, just to create that little well to put your um, sequins and things in when you're making your shaker cards. It just gives you that depth to put your acetate on top and have movement for the shaker pieces inside. So fairly self-explanatory, comes on a roll. It's got a, a liner over the top of it. So you add it to your project, take the liner off, and then you can add your acetate or whatever it is you're using to make your window. So fairly explanatory on that one. 8.99 or 8.99 as I say, saving 10%. And then with three minutes remaining, we are back to where we started all that time ago. Honestly, I feel I feel more intelligent leaving the studio. <laughs> I will. I'll walk out there with a stride, bigger stride in my step, thinking, you know, I know a lot about glue now, thanks to Jan. But um, this collection is certainly the one to go for if you are A, brand new to craft and you're wanting a little bit of everything. B, if you're somebody perhaps who's thinking, well, I'm not quite sure which, you know, glue I want to go for. Well, go for this because it is a little bit of a try. Try me with a little bit of everything, isn't it, really? Uh, or C, if you are somebody who's just been crafting for ages, this is a great way uh, to build up your adhesive stash because you have got a bit of everything there. You've got your foam pads, you've got your red liner tape, you've got your glue tape pen, you've got your dotty tape pen, you've got your uh, tacky glue, you've got your collar all-purpose glue and then you've also got your 3D uh, glue kit as well and it is important to stress that you will get uh, the syringe and the uh, corned beef key uh, with that as well. <laughs> I just I just think and a lot of people have all also said this that, that that deal is phenomenal because as I say it just offers you a bit of everything and uh, pretty much I know we've showed you lots of other glues as well kind of like Jam was saying we're specialist glues but I think that's going to kind of tackle all your everyday encounters pretty much as far as crafting is concerned. It's a really great bundle. If you've got this in your basket, um, then there is still time to check out after the show. And again, if you're sat there going, well, I'm all right as far as adhesives are concerned, it's a great deal for the fact that you're saving 25%. And then if you're a Platinum member, which you know the majority of you are, you can take another 20% off that. So it's a great day just to stock up on all those essentials because you don't want to run out of your adhesives. Uh, 19 pounds or 33.50. That has been a brilliant, brilliant show. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, thoroughly, thoroughly educated. And before we go, let's go back to the first demo that Jan did with the uh, all-purpose and the tacky glue. How are they looking now, I those just two? think this is got to be one of the best demos ever, Ben, honestly. It's like, which one would you want to put on the top of your card? And this is the epitome of using the right glue. So for matting and layering, this one was our all-purpose glue. Beautifully flat, absolutely perfect. And then when I compare it to what I did with the tacky glue, just look at the state of this. Would you want this on the front of your card? It's starting to peel away at the sides. Oh, no. It's all dimpled underneath. I know which one I would rather have on my card front there. Just, just says it all, I think. Absolutely. Yep. A great demo. Uh, maybe not going to make it up onto the, uh, the Crafty Walk of Fame, no, but a no, great no, demo no. for other reasons. It wasn't reasons. that kind of show today. <laughs> it was a brilliant show. Uh, and Jan, we are back for another two hours in uh, two hours' time with Creative Cravings. Ooh, Plenty are. to show you on that show yep. with the return of... We've got the inverted nesting we dies, sure haven't have. we? We sure have, yep. We've got the nesting dies. We've got some floral animals. I've got the pop-out numbers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, can't wait. Got some loads of nice demos for you later on. Thank you, Jan, so much. Always brilliant. Thank Thank you for watching as well and be back with us in two hours time for creative cravings we shall see you then bye for now